Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 13th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday again, and with that, we got patches for 135 different vulnerabilities, which of course also affects uh, Chromium vulnerabilities that uh, got ported by uh, Microsoft. Now, among those 145 vulnerabilities, we have 10 critical vulnerabilities. And then one important vulnerability was previously disclosed, and another important vulnerability that's already being exploited. Probably the most concerning vulnerability, as uh, Renato also uh, points out in the Patch Tuesday blog post, is a remote code execution vulnerability affecting the remote procedure call runtime. RPC, always good for some vulnerabilities, and this is like other RPC vulnerabilities, warmable. Now, CVE number 2022-26809 and a CVSS score of 9 Point eight, so just a little bit short of a perfect 10 year. With exploitability being more likely according uh, to Microsoft, this means this is something you really need to patch relatively quickly. Now, I wouldn't really be too worried about an external attack. If you're exposing port 445 to internet, then you have probably other problems than patching. But remember, this could easily uh, be used uh, inside your network. For example, uh, if you have an infected system in your network, vulnerabilities like this are then often used uh, for lateral movement. So that's why you really need to pay attention uh, to these vulnerabilities, even if an open port 445 may not be at the top of your concerns. Another critical vulnerability and a remote code execution that affects a network service is a CVE 2022-24497. That affects the Windows network file system. Now, NFS is not typically enabled uh, on Windows machines, so uh, that makes that less of an issue. But if you do use NFS on Windows, then definitely this is, again, something that you need to pay attention to. As far as the already exploited and disclosed vulnerabilities go, uh, well, both of them, like I said, are rated important. Bridge escalation vulnerabilities, the one that's already exploited is in the Windows Common Log System Driver, CVE 2022-24521, and the second one in the User Profile Service, CVE 2022-26904. But then again, privilege escalation vulnerabilities, we have tons of them, uh, not just in uh, these uh, products. For example, we do have a number of vulnerabilities, again, in the printer drivers. What's also sort of interesting, uh, there is a long list of remote code execution vulnerabilities that's being patched in the Windows DNS server. Now, exploitability here is less likely. They're all rated important with CVSS scores in the range of 6.6 to 7.2, but still that's uh, something to probably pay attention to if you are uh, using the Windows DNS server, in particular, if you're exposing it uh, to the outside world and DNS server, maybe one of these services that you're actually exposing. So apply these patches quickly, hopefully before the next patch Tuesday rolls around. uh, None of these patches would, I think, sort of warrant any kind of emergency action, but uh, keep watching for any exploits that may be released for the RPC flaw. And on Monday, I mentioned the possibility of an Nginx vulnerability. Uh, Well, it turns out that we now have official word from Nginx as far as this vulnerability is concerned. It is related to LDAP, as was hinted in the original announcement. And yes, there is a problem, but it's really more a configuration issue, how it's uh, being used. If you're using uh, the Nginx LDAP reference implementation, then there is a possibility, for example, that the various headers are being passed 
to the Python script on the command line, which then of course may lead uh, to a command injection. What Nginx here recommends in this case is uh, to not pass along any HTTP request headers. There is a configuration directive for that. That's also true if you have any optional sort of uh, unused uh, configuration parameters. And then of course, uh, make sure that you're configuring LDAP correctly, in particular, the group membership. I'll link in the show notes uh, to the Nginx statement, and it goes through all of these three different cases. So you can double check that you are not vulnerable. And ESET uh, published uh, details regarding an attack against uh, Ukrainian uh, energy companies that were not only going to disrupt some substations in Ukraine, but uh, also affect essentially wipe uh, the IT infrastructure of these organizations, uh, sort of, of course, with that delaying any response efforts. This was supposed to uh, be launched on April 8th, uh, apparently an obvious nothing happened on April 8th uh, because ESET and these companies uh, were able to discover the malware in time and disrupt it. This activity is attributed to the Sandworm Group, which is the uh, Russian APT that also was responsible for the Watch Garden Aces uh, router botnet that was uh, taken down uh, this weekend. Not sure if that takedown was somehow coordinated here uh, with this particular attack or if uh, this was just a coincidence. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.